Welcome back to Wasteland 2. I spent about 15 minutes before this episode just reorganizing my people's inventory. Especially the ammo. The ammo was a complete mess. It was in all sorts of different places. I had a bunch of ammo that I didn't even need and a bunch of ammo that was just way more than I could ever possibly need. I had like, I had over 250 shotgun shells. Which is way more than I'm ever going to use. It was pretty insane. So yeah, tons of reorganization. I put a bunch of ammo that I don't actually have any weapons for in my storage. Because they don't really sell for much. And ammo is kind of expensive, so I figure it's better just to put it in storage and, you know, just in case I can always go get it. I'll probably never use it, but it's not worth that much money, so it's fine. So stored all that, put the extra shotgun shells also in storage. Gave ammo to the people that could actually use it. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Aside from that, aside from just selling junk and things of that sort, I also bought a little bit of ammo. The one kind of ammo that I seem to keep kind of, like, very, very slowly running out of is 7.62. And I think it's just because two of my people actually use that. It's used in the assault rifles for Harper and Theodore. Whereas everybody else, I believe, uses completely different kinds. Yeah, I think everybody else uses different kinds of ammo, except for my two snipers, with which both use 50 cal. So yeah, I just bought a bit of 7.62, approximately 100 rounds. Gave that between Theodore and Harper. I also, in the last episode, I was debating whether to get rid of Helen's secondary weapon and just go straight for the anti-material rifle and only use that. And before I didn't get rid of it, but uh, yeah, I decided to finally do that. I just broke it apart. Broke it into its constituent parts. Sold and organized all the parts that came out of it. And, uh, yeah, just saved a bunch of weight doing that before she was perpetually almost at the maximum weight that she could hold. But now she's pretty comfortably under it. And the main, the main reason I did that is just because her other sniper rifle is frankly... It was good at the time, but my snipers lately have just become almost useless. They have great range, and that's cool, but if you look at the amount of damage they do, it's pathetic. You know, my assault riflers will just do a burst of damage and do 200 plus damage, and then my snipers come in and do like 100 so I figure, if I'm going to use any weapon with them, it's got to be the 50 cal. It's got to be the anti-material rifle, or they're not going to do a damn thing. Let's put a tiny dent in the side of a cockroach or something. Nah, they have to use this rifle. So, all that's done. Let's head to the overhead map, and let's go south. Past the radiation barrier that we now should be able to get past, because we... Well, we didn't, but... Woodson used, Woodson used 50 pounds of zeolite to make suits in about two seconds. He's very talented. Oh wow, there's a bunch of stuff here. Black skirt and tights. That sounds kind of cool. But this RPG-7. I feel like they're telling me something. I feel like they're telling me, you're about to fight a bunch of huge robots, so why don't you take this? Hello, Mad Money Mike. Am I, like, at the end of the game? I feel like I might be. It's weird, I mean, they throw this RPG at my face, and then they have a... a shopkeeper, which makes me think, is this like an end-of-game shopkeeper? You know, if you find out that you don't have enough ammo to take on the end boss or whatever, you can come back to him. Well, before that, let's check out these black skirt and tights. Oh, that's not nearly as cool as I thought it'd be. What about this? Nah.
A man smiles at you with a gleam in his eye. He looks like the kind of salesman your mother warned you about. The kind your father was. I'm Mad Money Mike, and I'm mad at money. That's right, I hate the stuff. That's why I'm practically giving away my merchandise. Look, best quality broken crap, only $9.99. Two handfuls of assorted rusty junk, just $3.99. $3.99, that's insane. Have a look. Everything's for sale except the little wind-up robots. Uh, I'm saving those for the robots. Wait, you what? <laughs> you think the robots are going to wa want to buy wind-up robots? I don't think the robots are going to want to buy anything. I think they're just going to exterminate you. If they want the robots, they're just going to kill you and take them. But anyway, I'll bite. You have toy robots? Look at these babies. I found them in a warehouse in L.A. See? Wind them up and they walk and shoot sparks. Push that little button and they talk. I will destroy you. Resistance is futile. Aren't they? Ain't that cute. Or ain't they cute, rather. I can't talk. Saving them for which robots? Huh? Oh, those robots in that base over there. Been seeing them all over lately. And I thought, you know, being robots, they might like cute little robot mascots to put on the robot desks. So I'm heading there to see if I can sell them a few. Brilliant idea, huh? No. No, it's not. Don't go there. You're going to die. What? Oh, come on. Who could hate cute little wind-up robots? You just stand back and watch. I'll have those killer robots of yours eating out of my hand in no time. See you around, friends. Mad Money Mike is about to get paid. So there's no way to stop him, huh? Alright, I'm going to be seeing his corpse later. What have you got? <laughs> That's all he has? Junk parts. How useful. Thanks. He is so dead. Hold on, maybe we can help him. I'd like to dedicate this next song to some very special people back in Arizona. You know who you are and how you've touched my heart. Oh my god. Okay, that's great. Maybe I'm talking to her so he won't be able to? Oh, no, he's just going to continue to talk anyway. Or... No, wait. Oh, the conversation's not progressing. Okay, I, th I think we <laughs> temporarily saved him. Standing under the arch and behind the golden gates is a smiling blonde woman wearing the robes and prosthetics of a child of the New Citadel. She holds a clipboard. Welcome to the New Citadel. Are you a pilgrim? No. Oh, that's too bad. Which, wait, what is he saying? Oh god, he's gonna die. Huh, that's too bad. Would you like to hear about Matthias and the golden future that he's bringing to humanity? Uh... Sure. I'm doing this just to see if they won't shoot me and I can do something maybe more clever, but I don't actually care. Uh, welcome, Pilgrim. We're delighted to see you. I will be directing you to the Pilgrim Welcome Center in just a few seconds, but first, a short survey. Question one. Oh god, he's dead. I can't do anything about it. <clears throat> Don't mind the blood pooling under your feet, just answer these quick questions. Where are you from? Los Angeles, Arizona, or neither? I'm from the moon. Uh-huh, okay. Question two. How did you hear about Matthias, Matthias and the New Citadel? A radio broadcast? Leaflet or flyer, or a friend. Uh, my moon alien friends told me. Great, thank you. And the last one. Are you a desert ranger? Yes or no? 
I'm wearing the badges, can't they tell? Uh, no. <laughs> great, thanks for taking our survey. You did great. Uh. That is an interesting definition of great. Well, I didn't think we'd last long. She said, Officer Jim, can you? And then encounter begins. Who is Officer Jim? They're all just called guard. Alrighty then. Eight armor, so this is definitely a good use for the death ray. Pew. Let's punch your head off. Okay, so I think one thing I'm going to do is, if I know I'm going to be able to kill an enemy before it can go again, I'm not going to use my snipers because their ammo is relatively limited. Okay, that encounter went great. Check around the parameter. Copy, Ranger Team Echo. Congratulations. Need eight points to upgrade these things, so let's leave that for now. Theodore. Seven points. Hmm. Alright, Field Medic I feel like is completely useless. I don't think there's a point to doing that. So either Surgeon, Leadership, or Assault Rifles. Let's go with Surgeon. Because it is something that comes up surprisingly often as far as skill checks go. Gross. going on here? <laughs> Dweezil. Dweezil and Johnny Zipper. Looks like a massive entrance into this place. Or maybe this is a separate warehouse. Looks like Johnny Zipper's about to shoot Dweezil. Am I about to come into a heated argument? What's up? You want to help, huh? Don't listen to him, he's trying to trick you, I should know. The altar boys lost two... Lost to our... Wait, what? Lost to our best because something... Lead you into a trap. Johnny's the dupe, he has to be cut up like that, he likes it. Okay. I don't trust either of you. What's up? Oh my god, he does look kind of terrifying. The young man looks like a frightened rabbit, all big eyes and buck teeth. His left leg is metal. And looks like a dentist's drill and clamp. You gotta believe me, Rangers. Johnny's the synth lover. Kill him or he and his altar boys will betray us to Matthias. 
Why are, why are they called the Altar Boys? They call themselves the Altar Boys because they're all surgery addicts. The way they see it, the less human they look, the better. They're sick. What's wrong with how Johnny was cut? Are you kidding? Everybody who joins the Children of the Citadel know they're going to get better arms and legs and hearts. But that's not what Johnny Zipper and his Altar Boys want. They want to be uglier. Deeper cuts, weirder prosthetics, crazier deformities. It's just... sick. Better hearts? Yeah, Atomic Hearts. Matthias' greatest invention. Supposed to make it so you never die. That's what Dr. Goochman told me when he gave me mine. But you can die, alright. Fucking synths can turn them off anytime they want. You start making trouble, boom, you're dead. It's like some sort of crazy DRM system with an off switch. A kill switch. Who is Goochman? The butcher, they call him. Cuts people up and puts them back together any old way. Adds parts, takes away parts. It's like he's playing with paper dolls. He did okay by me, so far. But what about the next time, huh? You're a troublemaker. Why aren't you dead? Uh, me? Well, they don't know I'm against them. I'm fighting the system from within. But man, if they found out, I'd be dead in a... a heartbeat. And how do we know you're not the dupe? Why would I be putting myself in danger like this if I was a dupe? I turned against Matthias as soon as he turned away from the golden future he promised us. I've been fighting him in secret ever since. How did Matthias turn away from his golden future? Matthias promised us we were all going to live in a perfect wonderland, where all human weakness would be replaced with synthetic strength. And here we are, stuck in a hole in the ground while he chases the likes of you. This isn't what I was promised. Why do you hate Matthias? I, you kind of already just answered that, but... Okay. And how can you help? There's an ambush waiting for you. Johnny was going to lead you right into it, but I can get you around behind it. Uh, okay. Kill Johnny and I'll take you. Let's talk to Johnny before we kill him. You look literally exactly like the other guy. A sick skeletal young man with metal claws instead of hands. But his real disfigurements are the rusty zippers that have been sewn into his torso. Black ooze leaks from them, scabbing on his pale skin, and the stench of rotting flesh comes off him off him in waves. He shakes with fever. Oh god, that is fucking disgusting. Don't listen to him. It's a trick. I'm the one to trust, I promise. Dweezy rats out everyone in to the synths. That's why Goochman gives him the best gear. Kill him, and let's get going. Every second he's alive is a chance for him to betray us. Look, if he's shaking with fever, I don't trust him to actually have a clear head. Let's see. Altar Boys. Yep, yep, yep. Who's Goochman? Matthias' chief surgeon. You're against Matthias? He is. You don't believe in Matthias' golden future anymore? Nope, he doesn't. Immortal Heart... Oh, this is something. Don't you know about them? They'll keep you going forever. Unless the sins want to turn you off. Then one click and goodbye. Ah, requires hard ass. I don't have it. What do you mean by evolved? There's three stages to Godhood if you join the new Citadel. At least that's what they tell you. Stage one, you're a pilgrim. Just a normal human waiting to be accepted into the cult. Stage 2. They operate on you and you become an evolved. Better. Stronger. Smarter than ordinary people. Or maybe just a sick freak like me. Stage 3. They put your brain in the body of a synth. And you become an exalted. A true fusion of man and machine. Except there's only one so far as I know. Matthias. 
Everyone else, everybody else is still waiting. Alright, what kind of a trick do you think this other guy is going to lead me into? Dweezy's a synth dupe. He's going to lead you into an ambush. I can get you behind him so you can wipe him out. I know I look like a freak, with these zippers all over me. But I'm on the level, trust me. What, you, what is with all the zippers? You think I wanted this? I thought they were going to make me into a superhero like Matthias promised. Instead, Goochman cut me open so many times for so many different experiments that he finally decided to put zippers all over me so he'd have quicker access to my organs. Oh. They're all infected. Rotting. Immortal heart or no immortal heart. I'm going to die from it. And how do we know you're not the dupe? I was a dupe, but not anymore. This ain't nobody's ticket to a golden future. Every cut, every cut Goochman made in me is infected. There's no way I'm getting out of this alive. I just want Matthias to die with me, that's all. <laughs> Kill him and I'll help you. I don't trust either one either. Here's what I'm thinking about Johnny Zipper. So my first thought was that he's the most... Well, actually, my first thought was I don't trust him because he's shaking with fever and he doesn't have a clear head and he's also kind of crazy looking. But I suppose my second thought was he might be the most trustworthy one because of the fact that he's dying. If he's dying, then he doesn't give a shit. He wants to go out in a blaze of... Well, I'm not sure if glory is the right word, but he wants to go out in a blaze of of retribution or revenge, he wants to take down Matthias. Or at least so he says. And if he's dying, he doesn't care, and it makes sense for him to do that. It makes sense for him to help us and do something so suicidal as to help us because he doesn't care about his life. Because he's going to die anyway. However, another thing that occurred to me is maybe he was promised that if he lures us into a trap, they'll put his brain into a synthetic body. Because that's the only thing that can really be done to save him, right? His body's too far gone, even though he has a synth heart and all these synth parts. If his whole body's rotting, you can't do anything about that unless you just take the brain. So maybe he was promised that they'd take his brain and put it into a different body. Just like Matthias. In other words, I don't trust either one. So, no. Gonna continue to take a look around. I noticed you can really go around the perimeter. There's gotta be like a secret exit or something, and apparently there's a helicopter over there. One way? Hmm? What in the hell is this? You, uh, waiting to use the border body? A nervous man stands with his legs clenched, lightly hopping in place. This guy's taking forever. Why are you waiting for the porta body? There's plenty of bushes around. Piss on the ground like an animal? No thanks. How would I wash my hands? Wait, I didn't think porta potties even had anywhere to wash your hands. They, they don't have any source of water, do they? I don't know, it's been forever since I've used one. I don't I don't remember. Maybe they do. 
Or maybe they have like a hand sanitizer dispenser or something? I don't know. Can I like <laughs> pick the lock and <laughs> just force my way in? Alright, I'm just gonna leave that for now. Hmm. They're not locked or trapped, huh? I don't believe you. Oh. I guess they're actually not. A guide to becoming a child of the Citadel. No thanks. Yeah, it looks like some sort of initiation thing. Well, this is the orientation. How come they don't want to kill me? I mean, the people at the front freaking gate tried to kill me. And these people don't care. It's weird. And couldn't I just hack this? Yeah. I could just hack this damn thing. Well, if they don't want to shoot me and I can just go in as an initiate, I feel like that's the best way, because then I could maybe get pretty deep inside and kind of scout the place out before I start shooting. I might be able to make some more clever things happen than just running in with my guns up. Let's see what's inside of here, though. Oh, 12%. What the hell? How is that even possible? I'm level 10. Yeah, it's 60% chance against level 10 challenges. You're telling me this is harder than level 10? Hello? Somebody in there would want to kill me. It's the Kotsk. Hmm. So why is this one so easy to hack, but this one's so hard? It looks like this might allow me to skip attacking that person. I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna try to hack it. There's a really bad chance of this actually succeeding, but I'm just gonna try it. Oh. Wonderful. Can I even fix it? I don't think I can, can I? No, oh, that's great. Alright, I feel like I'm gonna blow my cover, even though I'm, pre I'm pretty sure I already did that by killing all these people. But I feel like I'm gonna blow my cover, and they're gonna... everybody's gonna try to kill me if I go in there, so let's just become an initiate. Um. 
Well then. A lot of killing to do. Zero damage? <laughs> they can't even hurt me, they're critting for zero. Oh, aren't they precious. Alright. Um, this is a job for my shotgun. So let's just kill the really important people and then just use my shotgun on the other people, because these people don't do no damage. There's literally no reason to even bother attacking them. As far as I can tell. Oh, shit. I didn't realize they only have five armor. Yeah, with only five armor, I definitely do not want to use the death ray. Whoops. I wonder if the followers will maybe stop attacking me if I kill all the guards. You think they'd be smart enough to realize that they don't stand a damn chance? Probably not. Even the bathroom dude is coming to kill me. Don't need to worry about anything from here on out. Let's just use my shotgun. And punch, so we don't waste any important ammo. Okay, let's actually speed up the combat speed just for this, because this is going to take a very long time. Alright, it's at two times right now. Let's go to three times. Do I need a triple burst? I believe I do. Yeah, it's not going to kill him if I don't, unless I crit. Goodbye, four followers. Almost four. Just get these people out of the way for the shotgun. Hmm, this is not the most convenient place to shoot. I really want to shoot here, but I'm going to be hitting two of my own people. Uh, let's go for these two, I guess. Yeah. 
Man, what's game He's just doing his own thing? Just keeps losing control and punching people to death every single turn. Alright, fuck efficiency, I'm sick of this. Die. I'm not gonna use my sniper rifle though, that's over the top. Lose control this time. We get to choose who we want to explode. Double kill. Triple kill. I think I'm just gonna leave the combat speed on three times. Oh my god. Copy. Congratulations, Echo One. Six points. Let's put another point in. Barter, I suppose. Another point in brawling for Lexcanium. So how many entrances to this place are there? Let's keep going this way. I never kept exploring there. It looks like, yeah, you can't go in this way. It's completely barricaded off. There's no way to open it. This potentially goes inside over here. Maybe. Maybe there's like an underground entrance or something. And this... Uh, this goes nowhere. Ooh, I can even see the top of the helicopter. Oh, look at his outline. Okay, I guess this is the only way in. Other than potentially the little warehouse place over there. This can't be the main building though, right? I mean, this just looks like a little shack. New Citadel interior. this place. What are these things on the walls? My first thought was like server farms, but they don't really look like it. Some other form of machinery. It's all red and ominous. Alright, well, before I get any deeper into the new Citadel, I think I'm going to end this episode here. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, we will continue to explore the new Citadel and try to find Matthias.